and to be joined by the last hospitality industry specialist, Paddy. If you would mind turning your microphone and your video on, because Paddy is joining me all the way from Nailsworth today, um, from the olive tree. So Paddy, good morning, how are you? Extremely well, thanks Beth, how are you doing? Good, I'm fine. So look, we've, we've gone from the shoreline of Ireland to central London, and now we're gonna end up in some beautiful countryside with you. Would you like to help the, uh, the audience today understand what the olive tree is, who your clientele is, where are you, what yeah. are you doing in business? Happily, well, we're in a beautiful market town of Nailsworth, which is uh, South Cotswolds. We've been there for 16, 17 years now, running a Mediterranean restaurant and pizzeria. Um, but we operate very much as a coffee shop uh, from early mornings through to lunch and then bistro in the evening. Uh, fantastic following, um, extremely loyal customers. Um, you know, you can sort of put a time on the day with who arrives through the door with oh, what I coffee they're that. having. So it's very much first name basis all the way. And so if you've got, if you've been trading for all that time in a community, what, what did the community expect of you in lockdown? Did they put pressure on you to find a way to trade? Have they been okay with you not trading? You know, it's, it's like one big family uh, down, down in Nailsworth and, uh, you know, everyone looks after one another and everyone's concerned for families. Um, so I think, you know, during the early stages of March, um, it was horrific to see. It was like business fell off the edge of a cliff because people were scared, you know, and, and rightly so at that point. Uh, and we were hanging in there by the by the skin of our teeth. But obviously, being an operator, you were you were public enemy number one for the staff because the hours weren't there. Um, but yet, as the, as that final week progressed towards the takeaway, um, it just got busier and busier and busier. Uh, Boris's announcement on that Friday night that we had to close uh, from Friday night onwards, but only operate as a takeaway uh, or, or delivery. Um, the love we felt in the town building up that week, we had, if it was a normal evening in the restaurant, we would have operated and turned over three or four times. Um, we'd gone from serving just the restaurant to, to the Shire. Wow. And so there's a, there must be a real desire for you then to get back to a new normal and service those community of people who sound as if they're using the olive tree as an essential part of their, their you know, their country life. I mean, what, what, how are you feeling about reopening and, and what, what does it look like for you in the olive tree at the moment? Well, I think um, certainly, as, as, as Peter had said, in the, in the early weeks, I had a terrific break. It was, you know, it's hard work running a business. So to, so to have that time off, um, you know, from, from decision making was superb. Um, that being said, you know, we, we were in a strong enough position to obviously furlough the staff um, and just to take stock of where we were at. But, you know, as, as Peter did say, you know, I started implementing procedures early on um, so that there wasn't this final rush. Uh, and we kept in touch either on the phone uh, with your customers because you know them well or, or by social media. So the fact that we were deep cleaning, the fact that we were changing, the fact that we were putting up screens and implementing all these decisions weeks ago um, has helped the community um, with their confidence because I think moving forward, it is all about customer confidence. Um, and that, do you think that that safety angle will be a, a strong determining factor on where people choose to eat and have coffee when they feel comfortable to come out? Paramount, absolute paramount. You know, I have had one or two takeaways over over the, the you know the COVID period, and and it, and it's gone from having a you know an A4 written bit of paper on the window. Um, to you know to, to other measures um for us you know I, I start with you know sanitizers on external doors that sets the scene you know and people are aware of that um through the through the website they will see images as to what we've done so prior to arrival they know what to expect mm. and so have you how have you integrated or preparing to integrate the technological side of business. We've heard both from Gary and from yeah. Peter that not only does society expect the convenience of distanced ordering, but also they, they want to have um, a safe in-house dining experience. How have you embraced new technology? 
I think, um, you know, from, from the outset, both Peter and, and Gary had sort of, you know, uh, highlighted it. Um, and it's, it, there will be one option, uh, you know, as to whether or not a customer wants to, you know, have a, have a, a one touch menu or ideally, you know, the next stage of Rhino Online is the in-house dining, you know, so from our uh, perspective, they would go onto our website and there will be a, you know, an order online, a phone or in-house dining. So throughout their stay with us, they can order another bottle of wine, they can order a coffee. Um, it, the hospitality horizon has changed. You know, um, I hope it does return. I, I really do. And I think um, both Peter and Gary have obviously nailed all the highlights, you know, the great points with Rhino Online with, you know, running as a takeaway and a, and a delivery. Um, the, you know, the, the biggest part now is going to be the in-house dining. But what's terrific about the technology we have with, with Rhino is the fact that, yes, we can we can increase in-house dining early on in the evening and later in the evening and perhaps block out that key takeaway time of your business um, to increase sales and, and push sales throughout the whole evening. So ultimately, you've lost covers in house, but hopefully as, as, as a business, you can recoup those costs by you know, educating the public and, and spreading out your business o over the course of the evening. And it's obviously gonna be, um, and you're very passionate about the industry that you work in. Do you think um, we will see in the coming months and, and throughout next year, this real division between successful hospitality based businesses those that adapted to change and took steps versus the ones that will no longer be able to find a viable way to trade because the old model just doesn't work anymore do you think it, that will happen it, 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 i think it's inevitable to you know to a point and, and it will come down to the to the organization or the business owner um you know as to, as to how they do change um rolling stone gathers no moss you know it's you you've got to adapt um you know in in this environment or yes you will get left behind but the customers will vote you know the customers will vote with their feet you know as they always do um you know and i certainly think things like TripAdvisor. Um, more so historically has always been about the experience uh, and certainly that's going to be a strong part of it but people are going to be looking very much at your COVID um, you know operation um, and how safe you are you you know heaven forbid you get a bad report on that front that's not going to do you any favours let alone if your sea bass is slightly overcooked. I see. That's, that's the challenge though isn't it in, yeah. in a world where your customers can show an instant like or dislike for their experience, you, you've got nowhere to hide because with social media platforms and uh, TripAdvisor and Twitter, they can instantly show the world what you're doing wrong as quickly as you're doing right. So that's a lot of pressure. How are you going to take the, the customer experience? Because I know from your website, there's such a community feel. How do you think you can replicate that when people have got to be a meter apart and they're ordering from an app or a a disposable menu do you think you can still hang on to the the ambiance of the industry you've got no choice so you've got to give it your best best shot um i had no insight um but you know six weeks ago i, I set up the entire restaurant based on a meter because if it was any more than that it, it really wouldn't be worth operating so it's, it's very much been based on that it's you know it Potentially, it could lose the, the, the buzz, the feel, the atmosphere, the ambiance, you know, the experience that people want when they go to, to their favourite, um, you know, favourite restaurants. Um, so, you know, we will give it our very best shot, but things have changed beyond recognition, you know, and I understand that um, aside from having to give details on arrival at, at a restaurant, uh, tables that would normally have been set with glasses and cutlery and condiments, et cetera, et cetera, um, have all going to be removed. Um, you know, so we're going to, you know, we're, we're very much in it together. Um, and it's very much a case of, you know, educating the public that when they do go out for dinner or they do go to the pub, expect changes, you know. Um, but we, we, you know, we'll do all we can to, you know, to generate that atmosphere. I think ultimately, you know, people buy from people and it's how we train the staff, you know, uh, and how they engage with the customers. Um, we're all learning to walk again. You know, we used to be in, a, a, in an industry where the busier it got, the bigger the buzz. Uh, you know, we all enjoy multitasking, whereas now you have to, you know, rein that in, follow procedures, 
So, you know, time, time will tell, but I think the technology needs to be in place. And I think with Rhino, we've got an opportunity to, you know, to, to survive. And so a final piece of advice for anyone listening who their main concern is either that embracing technology to facilitate continuing to trade, either the fear is associated with it either be expensive, difficult to launch and onboard, or it will malfunction and it will complicate things beyond a level that they can cope with. Any advice as to how to, to take that first step? Stay calm. Keep calm. You know, Keep trading. Think, 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 yeah, things will, that, you know, it, it, it's, it's changed, it's technology, things will happen along the way. Um, you know, I had, a, I had a dry run with my thermal printers last week and it fell offline. Uh, which could have been crucial during a Saturday evening if you couldn't get those off, but you, you'll work through them. You have to. You've you've got two choices: um, either 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 sell or take the key to the front door with a good luck card, uh, <laughs> or, or give it your best shot. You know, um, but be confident because I think you've got people out there that that can support you. You're not you're not alone. Um, you, you know, invest the time now, as, as as Peter said. Get on with the changes now. Um, try and do a few dry runs, iron any problems out, maybe get some staff, some friends ordering just to, you know, do a few dry run evenings. You can do it. Brilliant. Thank you very much, Paddy. I'm going to end our little slot there. Thank you so much. And um, next time in the Cotswolds, I'm going to look you up and come for coffee at the Olive Tree. Thank you so much for joining me. 